weeknights at 11.30 on TV4. Winner of the 1988 United Press International Award for the nation's best television newscast. Eyewitness News on TV4, where the news comes first. This is KVOA, TV4 Tucson. And now, live from TV4, where the news comes first. This is Eyewitness News at 10. A somber night in Patagonia as a class of 89 mourns a tragic loss. Good evening, everybody. I'm John Hook. And I'm Martha Vasquez in for Patty Wise. A tragic reminder of how deadly a mix drinking and driving can be. Tonight, the town of Patagonia remembering one of its own. Steve Daniels has just returned and has a story now in our newsroom. Steve? It's high school graduation night in Patagonia, normally a time for celebration. But tonight, it's all overshadowed by the loss of a classmate. It just takes something out of you. It's as if the whole community is one big family and you lose a family member. It's just, it, you know, it's, it hurts. Patagonia is a small town about an hour's drive south of Tucson. Everyone knows about the awful accident that happened Wednesday night, the one that killed 18-year-old Jerry Pecholicchio. Tonight, many went by the town church to say goodbye. Jerry was supposed to graduate from Patagonia High tonight. Four others in the graduating class survived the car crash. They limped through tonight's ceremony. Classmates say those in the wreck were drinking, celebrating the end of school. Tonight, they dedicated graduation to the missing member of the senior class, knowing they've all learned a tough lesson about drinking and driving. I think people that, are, that knew Jerry and know now they can actually see what can happen. Maybe they will change their minds and maybe they'll think twice. Lawmen have not filed charges against the student driving the car. That too is upsetting lots of folks in Patagonia tonight. Many say that's a crime in itself. All right, Steve, thanks very much. It was perhaps the largest audience ever for a graduation of students at the Arizona School for the Deaf and Blind. Several hundred family and friends of the 22 graduates crowded into Leo Rich Theater tonight at Tucson Convention Center. Nearly 60% of the graduates go on to college. Tonight's graduation ceremony was highlighted by the first deaf president of Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C., who delivered tonight's commencement address. The only limits that they'll face in life are limits that they impose on themselves, that now the world is a friendlier place for them and they can go out and face the challenges, but don't be afraid to fail. Rise above our dreams is a motto of this year's ASDB graduating students. An emotionally handicapped student is clinging to life tonight after falling off a moving school bus. Happened on the way to school this morning. The bus driver says the boy got up from his seat, opened the emergency door in the back, and either fell or jumped from the bus. The boy's identified as 13-year-old John Franklin. He's listed in critical condition at University Medical Center tonight. Some TUSD buses have monitors stationed at the back, but there's no law requiring it. In this case, the district did not feel there was a need for it. The students on this particular run are very passive normally. They would get into the normal little conferences on the school buses and no real confrontations requiring an adult monitor to be with them. Driver says he didn't notice anything unusual in the boy's behavior before the accident. Bad school bus accident in Colorado. One child killed, 35 others hurt. Bus plunged off a mountain road, rolled down an embankment, and landed on its roof. No other vehicles involved. Investigators don't know what went wrong. 41 people were on board, most of them sixth graders returning from a camping trip. Ten students still hospitalized tonight. And two miners hospitalized in Tucson tonight after a train crash in Magma's underground copper mine. The miners were transported to Tucson Medical Center. One is being treated for head injuries, the other for chest injuries. Magma says the accident involved two trains, one carrying miners, the second carrying ore. It happened nearly 3,000 feet underground. Six people were treated and released in San Manuel. Magma doesn't know what caused that crash. An air ambulance has crashed in Montana. All four people on board killed. The helicopter was transporting an injured rancher to a hospital in Billings. It was due there last night but never arrived. Investigators found the chopper's wreckage this morning. No word on what caused that crash. Qantas Airlines has never had a crash. 
But there were some terrifying moments on a flight from Sydney to Singapore last night. The 747 was on automatic pilot when it went into a steep climb. The pilot disengaged the automatic pilot and the plane went into a violent descent. 300 people were on board, 40 weren't wearing seat belts. They were thrown around the cabin. Most suffered only minor injuries. The plane did land safely, but for a time, passengers had their doubts. This sort of huge bang and sort of everything went. Yeah. The nose Flying. of the plane sort of went up and then the engine started but, to rev and, yeah. then, and then it dropped so everybody just went to the ceiling with all the items that were around and just crashed down all over the place. We, just, we thought it was it. No surprise, investigators think there was a problem with the autopilot system. Investigators in California still trying to figure out what sparked a huge winery fire. Nearly 500 firefighters fought the five alarm blaze. Took more than two hours to bring under control. A warehouse complex burned to the ground. It's owned by the Almaden Winery. Nobody hurt. But an elderly woman killed when fires swept through her Scottsdale home. Broke out early this morning. It took firefighters just a few minutes to put it out. But the victim was already dead. No word on what caused that fire. Two brush fires near Yuma have been contained tonight. This was a scene early this week. Nearly 5,000 acres burned. Both fires began in California and jumped into Arizona over Memorial Day weekend. Investigators say they were man-caused. Now just 50 firefighters are on the scene mopping up. You'll remember fire raged through millions of acres of land in America's national parks last summer. But the Interior Department is vowing this year will be different. It is dropping the let it burn policy and instead all fires will be fought. The Bush administration called the let it burn policy impractical and unprofessional. President Bush is spending the weekend at his vacation home in Maine. Mr. Bush was greeted by 2,000 people at Pease Air Force Base. He returned to the U.S. after attending the NATO conference in Brussels. Mr. Bush called the trip a triumph of hope and he brought back a message of unity and peace. In short, this week's NATO summit in Brussels showed that we are ready to help shape a new world. In this period of historic change, the NATO alliance has never been more united, never been stronger. And we it was an upbeat finale to an upbeat week for Bush. In fact, Mr. Bush thought the week went so well, he figured he'd take the weekend to relax. He took his powerboat out for a spin this afternoon. Then he did some fishing. The president was successful there, too. He caught several mackerel. He'll return to Washington tomorrow. Well, when the president returns to Washington tomorrow, he'll be briefed on all the turmoil on Capitol Hill. It has been a topsy-turvy week there. House Speaker Jim Wright resigned, and it was learned that Congressman William Gray was being investigated for allegedly having a so-called ghost employee on the payroll. Many members of Congress were outraged that the Gray investigation had been leaked to the press. Today, Attorney Richard, General Richard Thornburg told the Senate committee he is launching an investigation of his own. He says if he finds out who started those leaks, they will be fired. Thornburg insists the investigations in Congress are not politically motivated. Congressman Donald Lukens says he'll stay in Congress despite all of his legal troubles. Last week, Lukens was convicted of having sex with a 16-year-old girl, and now he's appealing. Since his conviction, Republican Party leaders in his home state of Ohio have urged Lukens to step down, but he says he will not let all the lies of a, quote, delinquent individual ruin him. Lukens says he's innocent. He could be sentenced to six months in prison. Sentencing set for June 15th for Richard Greenway. He's the man convicted of killing Melinda Peters and her mother Lily Champagne in their foothills home last year. Greenway was in court today trying to persuade the judge to give him a life sentence rather than the death penalty. Greenway told the judge if he could give his life to bring back the two women, he would. A judge in Phoenix has agreed to release Earth First co-founder Dave Foreman. Foreman was arrested two days ago for conspiring to damage three nuclear facilities. Judge let him out of jail on an unsecured bond. Foreman's attorney argued his client is no different than others who believe in preserving Earth. My client is a man who believes. He believes in the Earth. He believes in saving the Earth. He believes in saving the planet. He believes certain things are bad for the planet. For example, nuclear power. And he's not alone in that belief, is he? Three other members of Earth First were arrested with Foreman. Judge ordered those members be held without bond. A judge in Tucson still deciding whether or not Pima College Board member Carlene Kaltemark is holding office illegally. Testimony wrapped up yesterday. The state attorney general says Kaltemark does not live in the district she represents. If found guilty, she could lose her seat on the board. The judge could have a decision in the case by Monday.
As Eyewitness News continues, the military versus the people, tensions flare in China. And the explosion aboard the USS Iowa. Now the investigation is focusing on suicide. If ever you're not satisfied with one of our tires, please feel free to bring it back. Thank you. Discount Tire Company. How can some supermarkets afford a lot of low-price ad specials? They follow a high-low pricing policy, which means high everyday prices to make up for the low ad specials. Drop the price of oranges, keep the coffee high. Lower the cola, keep the eggs high. Smith's thinks a better way to run a supermarket is to have fewer specials and low everyday prices. Our permanent discount prices keep your total food bill down week after week after week. Smith's, the certified low price leader. The soul of American jazz. The spice of a backyard hot dog. The spirit of the national pastime. And the family fun of the Cosby Show. An American classic you can enjoy every Thursday night on NBC. Was it suicide? The blast aboard the USS Iowa that killed 47 sailors? That is what Navy investigators are reportedly exploring, specifically a sailor who had previously written letters about his death and an explosion aboard the Iowa. Navy investigators are now focusing on Clayton Hartwig, the last man to touch the gunpowder that exploded in Turret 2. Hartwig has been described as despondent, aloof, and he reportedly told a witness on one occasion, if you gotta go, go in a blast. You go quick, you go painless. The witness says Hartwig talked about using a timing device to trigger a chain of explosions. The Navy has tested the theory and reportedly it worked. Such a device could have given off smoke or a noise, warning the sailors in the final terrifying moments inside Turret 2. The last words of sailor Richard Lawrence We've got a problem in here, consistent with the theory of a prior warning. Another voice can be heard almost simultaneously saying what may be the words, smoke, 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 help, help. Many of the victims were found in defensive positions, also consistent with a prior warning theory. Kendall Truitt, who was originally at the center of this investigation, says he's relieved. Well, I've known that I'd always be cleared because I had nothing to do with the explosion. And, um... I think it's really unfortunate that, uh, that they're starting to focus on him because I don't think he had anything to do with it at all either. Two sailors have told the Navy they heard Truett saying after the explosion, I can't believe he actually did it. The military continues to investigate the, quote, special relationship between Truett and Hartwig. The Chinese military tried again to crack down on demonstrations in Beijing, and again soldiers were turned away. Thousands of troops marched toward Tiananmen Square, only to meet a mass of students and civilians. Crowd blocked the soldiers' way and begged them not to crush the pro-democratic movement. The Soviet military under fire from dissident Andrei Sakharov, speaking before the Congress of People's Deputies, the Nobel Prize laureate called the Soviet intervention in Afghanistan a criminal adventure. Sakharov spent seven years in exile for criticizing the war. He won a seat on the new Soviet Congress in the nation's first democratic elections. There will be parliamentary elections in Poland Sunday, the first in 40 years, still another sign of democracy in Eastern Europe. It's being called the New Style election, and it will allow the Polish people to choose some members of the parliament. Well, Michael's keeping his eye on some big thunderstorms tonight. But will any of them make their way into Tucson? Michael's up next. Hey, kids, what time is it? Wild cherry, cherry, Pepsi. This goes out to all you wild cherry lovers. It's alive! They're in the Pepsi generation. Who? Me? Born to be wild! Earl Sabian, Wild Cherry Band. Hey, are you talking to me? New Wild Cherry Pepsi. Be there or be square. Precision Toyota is closing its doors. When we close our doors tonight, we'll be remarking, retagging, repricing absolutely every car and truck in our inventory, new and used. When we reopen our doors tomorrow morning, you'll be in for the most frenzied day of car shopping in history. All discount prices are clearly marked in the windshield. Hurry in, because when we close our doors tomorrow night, the sale is over. Decision. 
No limits for you. 3500 East Speedway. Join in the quest to preserve a gentle giant of the forest on the next National Geographic special. Climb the remote mountains of central China and track the elusive giant panda in its last refuge. From the beginnings of America's love affair with this exotic creature to today's efforts to rescue it from extinction, join host Mike Farrell and witness the wonders of the world on the best of the National Geographic specials. Sunday at 6 on TV4. Well, thunderstorms are knocking at the door, I understand. Are they going to come in? It doesn't look like it. We are hopelessly detached from what appears to be a big bunch of thunderstorms virtually next door, uh, three or four hundred miles away in New Mexico. But there could be some sweeping down from the north into northern Arizona. Now, one of the reasons that there's concern about those, they get out over the open waters of the lakes up there and uh, can create gusty winds and some boating problems. So be aware of that if you're traveling up to that part of the state. 98 for a high in Tucson today. Our low this morning was 60. We are a delightful 78 right now with just a northwest breeze. Do have a problem with dust as well as mold, and it's going to be around this weekend. Big thunderstorms continue to hammer at the eastern half of the United States. These bright cloud patches that you see, especially these running along an area where cold air is colliding with moist air coming up from the south. That's where the strongest thunderstorms are in progress at this time. Some of the rainfall there is very heavy, especially over parts of Kansas and Nebraska. Look at this huge area of red flashing. That indicates heavy to extreme precipitation. Chances are some large hail coming down. Did get some reports earlier this evening of up to baseball-sized hail in some parts of Kansas as well as Texas. Weather pattern that we have is very favorable for this kind of weather. Whole lot of wet air getting pumped up into the central part of the United States. Cool air coming down from the north, bumping into it. And where those two air masses collide, creating a cold front is where those strong thunderstorms can occur. But it is exactly that kind of circulation that gives us our warm, dry, dull conditions here in Arizona. And it looks like those will exist for the next several days at least. I want to show you way out into the Pacific Ocean. I mentioned last night that we could possibly have a massive heat wave with the weather machinery that is setting itself up, provided all of this stuff here were to drift over toward the east and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. You can see the high pressure over the Pacific. If we had that on top of Arizona, we would be cooking in the 106 plus range. There is a wave of new cool air pushing down across the Pacific Northwest. This is the northern edge of the first tropical storm of the season named Adolf. You can see some high clouds associated with that, another view of that weather system as it moves harmlessly out into the Pacific Ocean. We could get a batch of moisture from that weather system developing in the Pacific Northwest. It will probably run down across Nevada and head across the parts of northern Arizona, the border with southern Utah. If that's the case, frequently high base thunderstorms can develop there over some of the open waters of the lakes and reservoirs and create some boating hazards. People have had some difficulties with that in previous years. 93 in Atlantic City for a record today. In addition to that, a sticky 97 in Fort Myers, Florida, the coldest temperature in the country this morning, 28 Gunnison, Colorado. We normally have 95 and 63 here in Tucson, the record for this date, 105 in 1956. Well, a beautiful night continuing tonight with just a few high, thin clouds. It's possible some showers will try to develop way up in the northern part of the state tomorrow and Sunday. Tucson forecast 63 tonight, tomorrow above normal for this time of the year, but not by far, 98. It's Friday night. Time to reach into the old Weather Wrangler's Magic Party Pocket, celebrate the beginning of the weekend. Whoopee. Have a great one, Michael. Thank you, Michael. The controversial chemical Alar is being pulled off the market in the United States. Alar is used to give apples longer shelf life. The Environmental Protection Agency has linked Alar with cancer. The company that makes it, Uniroyal, says the chemical is safe, but it's pulling the product in hopes of calming fears about its health effects. Coming up in sports, Eric the Red gets the wheels turning with a cycle. And Michael puts on a show, but it's time for the Bulls to go. Dan Ryan is up next. Another case for Mobile Judge. Now, 7-Eleven, your quarter pound big bite is an Oscamaya brand hot dog? Yes, sir. And it comes with free chili and cheese. Good. And uh, yours, sir? Well, it's, uh, it's a generic hot dog. A generic hot dog. 
Court rules for 7-Eleven. But, Judge! Generic hot dog. Let's roll. The Quarter Pound Big Bite. Another reason 7-Eleven is judged best. You may not have the time, like the folks in Hidden Valley, to raise your own lettuce or grow your own carrots. But if you just slow down a minute, you could make the same homemade salad dressing the folks here do. All it takes is a little milk, mayonnaise, and our special blend of herbs and spices to make creamy, fresh, homemade Hidden Valley Ranch. You may not live in Hidden Valley, but it's real easy to get a taste of it. He created a plague of fear. I think he's an animal. The Yorkshire Ripper on Crimes of the Century. Saturday afternoon at 3 on TV4. Wouldn't it be nice if you could actually buy time? Do you have banker's hours? Try leisure time, third floor. Well, you really can buy time. I'm desperate. Panic time, lower level. Extra working time with mobile phone service from U.S. West Cellular. I've been waiting for an hour. Oh, I'm sorry. How long have you been waiting? Can I help you? Wish I had an hour to kill. Mobile phone service. What you're really buying is time. U.S. West Cellular. Well, given the matchup, I got to take the Lakers. I think they're a team of destiny again. You know, I really I go with that now. I, I thought the Pistons would win the NBA title outright this year because yeah. they were younger. I think that the Lakers are the hottest team in the NBA right now. I think their bench is stronger. It's going to be a great series, but I think the Lakers will win it. The Detroit Pistons have a grudge to settle with the Lakers. Chuck Daly's gang is headed for the NBA championship final after bumping off the Chicago Bulls in what turned out to be the sixth and final game of the Eastern Conference Final. It's never winning on the road, but Detroit made it look that way at Chicago Stadium tonight. And boy, was the crowd raucous. Look at this, 10,000 people at the Palace. The game was in Chicago. That was in Detroit. People paid three bucks ahead to watch Michael Jordan put on a show tonight. He had 32 points. This is the play of the night possibly of the year off to steal Michael how does he do this it is with mirrors I'm telling you Chicago led by a dozen off the Barnum and Bailey move but on the other side of the coin Isaiah Thomas was just as effective behind him the Pistons not only closed the gap they led it two at the break it doesn't look like Kareem Skyhook but it gets the job done Bill Lane beer and Detroit starts pulling away MJ pulls up for three Chicago is back within two but down the stretch, the Pistons pump in the high octane and they leave the Bulls in the dust. The final score, Detroit wins at 103 to 94. Now it is on to the championship showdown with LA. Game one will take place Tuesday night in Detroit. Tip off will come at six o'clock Tucson time. Drivers are all but conceding the Phoenix Grand Prix to Team McLaren. Teammates Ayrton Senna in Marlboro car number one and Elaine Prost have been dominating the World Championship Tour all year, and it looks like they're going to be in the driver's seat to beat uh, at the Phoenix uh, Grand Prix. Senna clocked a time of 1 minute 30.1 seconds today to take the provisional pole for the race. Prost was a second and a half back and appears to have the outside spot on the front row. Today's session had cars running around 95 miles an hour, and the only American in the race, Phoenix native Eddie Cheever, says he's impressed with the course, but not with the speeds. A lot more grip, and you wouldn't have expected the circuit to have as much grip as it did today. Um, I'm obviously biased being uh, being from Phoenix, but I think they've done a very good job on the circuit. It's safe, uh, a lot of runoff areas, there have been no big accidents today. The speeds are a lot slower than I would have expected. I would thought it would be a lot quicker than it is. The final round of qualifying will go tomorrow morning with the race taking place Sunday afternoon at 1.40. Today's rainy weather at the French Open not only wreaked havoc on the clay courts, it completely did in the game of America's Tim Mayotte. The number seven seed in the men's ranks is going home. He lost today in the only major upset in the men's ranks or in the women's ranks. Boris Becker moving along over on the women's side of things. No surprises. Steffi Graf probably heading for another Grand Slam victory. It hasn't happened since Frank Robinson wore the uniform of the Cincinnati Reds. Tonight, Eric Davis became the first Reds player in 30 years to hit for the cycle. A homer, triple, double, and single, all in the same game. And thanks to that bat in the fourth inning, he accounts for three runs on this booming homer to left field. That was virtually lights out for San Diego. Seventh inning, all Davis needs is a triple to complete the cycle, and he is going after it. Eric the Red goes in in a cloud of dust. 
Davis with six RBIs and the Reds score the 9-4 victory. Taking a look at games in the National League, it took them 11, but the Mets finally beat Pittsburgh. It took them four hours and 13 innings before Montreal beat Philadelphia. San Francisco used two homers by Kevin Mitchell to beat Atlanta. Chicago beat St. Louis, and it was Houston over uh, L.A. in the American League. Toronto beat Boston. Baltimore beat Detroit. The Yankees got by Milwaukee. Minnesota shut out uh, Chicago. It was Texas downing Seattle out on the coast. It is Cleveland leading Oakland by a score of four to two and Kansas City leading California in the PCL Toros lose again College World Series Florida State and Wichita State winners in Omaha and from the Juco World Series Cochise College has been eliminated they lose to Northeast Oklahoma three to two in golf taking a look quickly at the leaderboard former U of A golfer Don Pooley doing very very well at the Kemper Open he's one shot back of J Don Blake on the LPGA Tour it's Betsy King and Sherry Turner tied at the top of the Rochester International, and we would be remiss if we didn't mention this. Carla Garrett, the winner of the NCAA title in the women's discus, she heaved at 190 feet, 4 inches for the title. It's terrific. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Dan. You. Well, how would you like to spend your day in Arizona Stadium, <laughs> sitting in thousands of seats? Well, one guy's doing it, but it's all for a good cause. The fun is still going on. It's a KRQ's Mike Elliott is helping to raise the $145,000. That's what Jan Mech needs for that operation. Jan has leukemia and must have that transplant to live. For every dollar that Tucsonans donate, Elliott will sit in one seat at Arizona Stadium and then move on with the next dollar. Well, they have Elliott working at the stadium all Please weekend long. Son, uh, who is helping us accept, accept my saying thank you very much. Well, donations can be made by calling 323-7741. Get out a pencil now. 323-7741. Or at any Valley National Bank branch, you can make a donation there. Very good. I want to remind you, tomorrow night we're going to be here with the Children's Miracle Network Telethon. That gets underway right after our early news at 530, and we'll be on the air all weekend long. Hope you'll join us. Have a good weekend. We'll see you tomorrow night. has a new six-month